Okay, good evening, everyone. Tonight's class is about bias. If I am a Republican, or if I'm a Democrat, can I view the other side objectively without any bias at all? So we'll look at our Parsha and it will come to the answers. As always, the Torah has the answers for everything. But let me just pull up the screen here so you can all see it. Here we go. So this week's Torah portion, we're talking about a lot of things, but over here specifically, we're talking about the daughters of Tzlafchad. So this is a, around the 39th year that Moses is, Moses is in the desert. And um, Moses is actually at the height of his career. And what happens is the daughters of Tzlafchad approach him. So if you look at the text in front of you, the daughters of Tzlafchad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilad, Ben Bachil, Ben Mashel, Mishpot, Mashel, Yosef. And these are the names of his daughters. Beautiful names, by the way, which are used today. Very modern, nice, beautiful Israeli names. Machla, Noah. So these five daughters come to Moses and they say, we have a problem. They came, they stood in front of Moses, in front of Elazar the Kohen, in front of all the um, the princes, and they, they, said, they said the following question. Our father died in the desert. He was actually, their father was... Um, Either he was the one who gathered the sticks in the desert or he was the one from the Mafilim without getting into who he was. But they say, our father died in the desert. He wasn't part of the rebellion against you, against Moses, when Korach rebelled. He died of his own sin. He didn't have any sons. This is what they're saying. So, why should our father's name be eliminated? We want a portion with our father's brothers. Basically, the law of inheritance was that, you know, every father inherited land. And that was the goral, so to speak, which later on when Joshua went into Israel, there was a lottery. So they're saying, basically, our father died. He didn't have any sons. So give us a portion. What did Moses do? Moses said, hold on, let me ask God. Okay, now let's, let's analyze this. What is going on over here? Okay, let's, let's analyze this. Moses didn't know the, the answer to the question. In the next verse, we actually read, in the very next verse we read, that Moses went to ask God, and God said, hey, you know, it's actually very simple. Let's, if, if, the, if the father doesn't have any sons, look at verse number seven. Safchad's daughters speak justly, give them an inheritance. Basically, if he doesn't have a son, the daughters are there, no problem. If he doesn't have daughters, give the inheritance to his brothers. You know, there's no, it's a very simple thing. The question is like this, Moses went through tremendous challenges, difficulties, questions and trials throughout his 39 year career till now. And he always knew the answer. Moses was always a guy who knew the answer. And here suddenly Moses doesn't know the answer. So suddenly Moses says, hold on, let me ask God. It's a simple question. Why doesn't he know? So the answer is that as human beings, it's so difficult for us to be objective. It's extremely difficult for us not to be biased. And I'll give one example from the Talmud. The Talmud says that... You know, in Judaism, there's a 12-month calendar, right? We count the months. But every so often, there's a 13th month. The year has 13 months, and there's two Adars. Why is some years one Adar, some years two Adars? It's very simple, because the, the solar count, the sun goes around the earth. It takes 365 and a quarter days, approximately. And the moon cycle, monthly cycle, if you add that to a year, is 354. So you're off by 11 days. So every two or three years, depending on how often we need to catch up, the sun and the moon, the lunar and the solar have to be matched up. And therefore, we add a second, another month of Adar. Also, it's to do with Pesach. Passover has to fall out in the spring. Now, the Bet Din would have rabbis who are judging this case. They would deliberate in the case. They would analyze the case. And they would decide if that year would be a leap year or not. The two people the Talmud says, are not allowed to be part of the deliberations. Number one is the king, and number two is the high priest. The king is not allowed to be part of the deliberations because the king is biased. The king pays taxes by, pays his subjects, pays every salaries by month. So it's better for him 
I'm sorry, but the year, so it's better for him to spread it out over 13 months than over 12 months, so he's biased. But let's talk about the high priest. Here's what it says about the high priest. You see, the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, performed, so the holiest person, the Kohen Gadol, performed the holiest service, which was the incense, on the holiest day of Yom Kippur, and he went to the mikveh several times when he served God on Yom Kippur. So we are worried, says the Talmud, the Kohen Gadol is biased. He actually wants that Yom Kippur should fall out earlier on in the year, in September, not in October when it's colder, because the mikveh is cold, right? Anybody who's been to the beautiful mikveh of the Arizal in Sfat knows that it's a stream. It's a stream. It's outdoors. It's freezing cold. As the weather gets more and more cold, it's more it's freezing. So we worry that the Kohen Gadol cannot serve in the deliberations of 12 months or 13 months because we worry he's biased. Why is he biased? Because subconsciously he wants that there should be a 12-month calendar because if it's a 13-month calendar, Yom Kippur will be later on in the year and we are worried that the Kohen Gadol will want Yom Kippur earlier like it is this year, early in September, because it won't be so cold. In other words, we are so biased as human beings. It's so difficult for us to be objective, to think about another's opinions objectively. Now go back to Moses and let's look at what they say. The daughters of Tzlavchat come to Moses with a question. But Moses had to recluse himself. He said, I cannot answer you. Why not? Because the moment the daughters of Tzlavchat came to Moses and said, we, our father, was not part of the rebellion. He was not part of the open mutiny that Korach led against you, Moses, and he didn't die because of that sin, Moses felt, ah, 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 I'm biased. Because they led an open mutiny against me. And by you saying that your father wasn't part of it, I'm biased. So let's think about this. Moses was probably the holiest Jew, the greatest prophet, the greatest communicator, the guy who spoke to God himself, the guy who was 119 years old in this story, the guy who led the Jews for 39 years in the desert, the guy who was Mr. Objective, Mr. Ahavat Yisrael, Mr. Loving a Fellow Jew, Mr. Not Caring About Himself, the humility, the Torah testifies, Moshe was the most humble person to walk on the planet Earth, and yet Moses says, I'm biased. I cannot judge your case. Even though it was a simple answer, he said, Moses went right away. He says, God, please tell me what to do in this case. And God had to say, yes, they can have an inheritance. What a fabul fabulous lesson for us. You see, very often we get into a fight with our spouses, with employees, with friends. And we are 100% convinced that we are right. We can't even see the world in any other way but perhaps maybe just maybe we are wrong and we are biased as jews we have so many different opinions and i may think politically very very strongly that i am a hundred percent right and i cannot for the life of me fathom how anybody can have a different view than i am you are 100 percent wrong says the Torah, even Moses said, I am biased. And even Moses, they said that our father didn't die with the sin of Korach and Moses didn't even care about Korach. He didn't even care that he let, let Korach be the, the ruler. I don't want it. Moses never wanted to be a leader. And yet Moses says, never underestimate the power, the bias that we have the way our thinking evolves. So the next time somebody thinks differently than you, embrace them with love and think that perhaps maybe they are right. Even though you see the world that you are right, maybe they are right. You never know. Maybe. Who knows? The next time your wife shouts at you and you are convinced that you are right, maybe you are not right. The next time you have a fight with your coworker, employee, or business partner, and you are absolutely convinced that you are right, Think for a second, maybe I'm not right. Maybe the other person has a greater point of view than I am. Maybe I'm biased and therefore I'm thinking in this way. May Hashem help that we will all love and respect each other and one another. Trying to do the best to make this world a better place and to bring the revelation of Mashiach right now. Have a wonderful evening.
And remember, every night, 7.30 p.m., we are here.